Well, hello there. Just letting you know that today's video is going to be a bit heavy on the horticulture. Just so you know, you know, this video is in fact sponsored by Squarespace. Oh, Dizzy, let me show you what kit I'm using. Um, yes, I'm sorry if any of that little spinny bit made you appreciate what you've just had for lunch. Probably exacerbated by Sony's rather, um, organic stabilization system. Yes, and I've also completely smacked continuity in the face by cutting all of my luscious locks off. And talking about lock, I've been so impressed by the performance of his S5 in all of those videos that I went and bought one myself. Yes, I paid actual money to get one of these. And also it comes with this rather splendid 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens, which excites me so much, I need to wear man -man piece just in case I piddle myself. I simply cannot run out of words to describe this magnificent optical wonder. For start, it's cylindrical. It's got glass in the middle. It's black with white writing. It goes from kind of wide-ish to not so wide-ish. All right, it's boring. Yeah, we won't be needing that. They made things called adapters so I can fit some more interesting lenses on it. Look at this, M mount ultra wide goodness. That's a 12 millimeter lens. How small is that? And this is my favorite new find. It's a Pentax 50 millimeter F1.2. Now, this is truly exciting because I got this and there's an absolute bargain from the flea bay. Actually, I totally remember that wrong. I didn't buy this from eBay or I bought it from London Camera Exchange, but it's $249.99, which is fantastic. I say it's the bargain. Maybe I need to convince myself that's all right to buy yet another 50mm lens. But still, what a magnificent 50mm lens this is. So this is a Pentax K-mount lens, 50mm 1.2. Uh, seven elements in six groups. It's just one of those lenses that has not really been appreciated that much, mainly because it's a Pentax. You snobs. Originally introduced in 1975, the optical formula remained unchanged even with the introduction of the A version, which lasted from 1984 to 2004, which introduced the A setting and had nine aperture blades instead of the eight. Still the same optical design. If it's not broke, don't ruddy fix it. But look, there's every reason to buy one because you don't need to buy a Pentax body. I've mounted it onto a Panasonic, you can mount it onto Sony, you can mount it onto Canon, you can mount it onto a Nikon if you want. Or you could buy a Pentax K. The focus throw of this is fairly long, it's more than 180 degrees and it's really damn smooth, which is great for precise focusing. And when you combine that with the stabilization of the S5, that is one of the reasons why I bought the S5, you can pull focus with this lens really easily, handheld as well, and it doesn't mess with the stability of the video. Of course, it does take a little bit of practice to nail that focus accurately, but that's like that with any f1.2 lens with the depth of field so shallow. If you look back into the good old days, there are plenty of 50mm 1.2s to choose from. There's Nikon, there's Minolta, there's Olympus. Long story short, just get this. A lot of other 50mm 1.2s of that time were either one of two things, hideously soft or with hideous bokeh. Or sometimes they had both. This one, less hideous. Which is why this is a fantastic choice if you don't mind the fact that it says Pentax on it. Now, back in the days of Flickr, I followed a photographer called Moan. I think that's how you pronounce his name, Japanese photographer, who mainly takes photos of flowers and lots of bokeh. It's like 50% bokeh, maybe 75% bokeh, and 25% flower, or maybe 58% bokeh. Well, it doesn't matter what the percentage is. There was bokeh and flowers in the photos. Well, the percentage doesn't matter. What matters is that there was bokeh and flowers in a photo, right? And that's what this lens could do rather well, bokeh that is. Of course, not everybody can afford naughty luxes left, right and centre. So for those with shallower pockets than a typical like a person, then you have to look elsewhere for your bokelicious fun. And this is a good place to start. One thing that fascinated me about Moen's work is his fantastic foliage photos, which were characterised by that naughty, naughty lux of his. Compared to some other old 50mm 1.2s, I am pretty impressed with the Pentax's performance. When you get it in focus, the bits that are in focus look quite good. Still shows a little softness, but this is a 1970s lens. It has enough definition and the bokeh can look sumptuous with some interesting cat's eye shapes towards the edges. It's just I'm not entirely convinced about my foliage game. 
when I come to a place like this, I feel kind of at my death because, well, I know that's a tree, I know that's a plant, I know that's a flower, but what it's called, I don't know. I know it kind of looks good. I know what looks good, but I can't describe it in any more than simpleton language. That looks nice. That's pretty. Colourful. Green. But I guess that doesn't matter because this isn't a channel all about plants and stuff like that. This is all about cameras and lenses. And I know how to appreciate this magnificent beast from Pentax. I may not know my aces from whatever this is, but I know what ace bokeh is, and this is fantastic, mostly. Bokeh is mostly lush, as sometimes it's not completely perfect, it's no Noctilux, but then this is a fraction of the cost of a Noctilux. In fact, this is cheaper than a Noctilux lens hood. And lens hoods don't produce any bokeh at all. If you want a fast 50 with character, you're looking at an absolute bargain right here. These are the sort of lenses that necessitate a man nappy. For me, anyway. Sometimes it's quite hard to get excited by modern lenses because you can quite simply sum them up with three different things. Sharp, fast at focusing, low on aberrations. Modern lenses are amazing, just sometimes a bit too good, too clinical. Now there are two aspects of photography. There's the science side and then there's the art side. When you start looking at lens sharpness, MTF charts and how low on aberrations a lens is, that's more towards the science side. Towards the art side, you don't need perfection, you don't need to pixel peep. If you feel it's right for the photo, then it's right. Sometimes you need a bit of that lairiness, the bokeh that makes you question, how on earth did it produce that from what I just saw? I mean, we live in a world with imperfections and wabby sabby beauty, which can look better when it's shot through a lens with a warm gooey look. This lens is one of the reasons why I love Pentax. I mean, they have been the butt of many jokes, including some of my own jokes, but because in the digital era they've kind of been left behind, people have just ignored Pentax glass. And this is one very good reason why you should appreciate Pentax lenses a bit more. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you want to set up your own domain, online retail space or website, it's super simple to get started and make your next move with Squarespace. With an easy to use interface filled with loads of templates and backed up with 24 seven customer service, you can try it out with a 14 day free trial and get 10% off your first order with this link and discount code.